Welcome, everybody, to my first PC review. Uh, the PC that you can see right now, this is, well, not mine, but mine and my girlfriend Jess's brand new mini gaming PC. And it's probably without a doubt the best mini gaming PC that I've ever had the pleasure to use, and probably the best one I've ever seen anybody use. It's not all that common that you see a mini gaming PC, but uh, I thought I'd give a review a go today just so that you guys can see how good this thing is. So let's get on with it. Firstly, I want to say a massive thank you to two different sponsors of this video. First of all, PC Specialist. The guys are amazing. They built this PC for me. They helped me spec it to make sure it was the best that I could get for the budget that we had. The guys are really awesome and it was really professionally built and done. So their link is in the description. Make sure you go and check them out. There are PCs on there for pretty much anyone and everyone. And thank you very much, secondly, to NVIDIA for supplying the graphics card for this build. Uh, it's a 780 Ti inside that mini PC, so this thing is an absolute monster. But thank you very much for supplying me with that card, it was greatly appreciated. But without further ado, on with the review. So as you can see in front of you, the case is a Bitfenix Phenom Mini ITX case with the NVIDIA branding on it. You can see an embossed NVIDIA logo on the side panel there. There's also one on the other side and that looks really cool. And there's a nice green mesh filter that runs around sort of the upper part of the case, which allows for a little bit of airflow. This thing is extremely well built. It's a really nice metal design and it's extremely quiet. It holds a lot of sound in as well. The only bad thing about this case is that you have to mod it yourself in order to get a CD drive to stick out of the front of it. There are no sort of expansion drive slots at the front. There is one on the inside of the case, but the outside of the case doesn't have a slot for it. So my solution, I had to buy an external DVD drive, but really, it's not really that much of a problem. Moving on to the internals, we're starting with an Intel Core i5-4690K. This is the most up-to-date i5 processor that you can get, and it runs at 3.5 GHz stock. Now, I haven't overclocked this thing yet. I want to make sure it survives for as long as possible, but really, 3.5 GHz quad-core processor is more than enough for any games on the market right now. I stuck that on an Asus H97i Plus Mini ITX motherboard, um, which is pretty much a standard mini ITX motherboard. It's got everything that you'd need. It's got your PCI expansion slot. It's got two slots for RAM. It's got expansions for, I think, up to six. No, it's four USB 3s on the back and two on the front of the case. But it's got everything that you'd ever need for a mini motherboard. And it performs really well, actually. I didn't stick a cooler on the CPU. And I thought that was going to be a massive problem because I've just used the stock Intel one. But this thing is so quiet during operation, it's unbelievable. My average PC, the one I use at home, is like a jet engine. It's so loud. I haven't cleaned it in a while, to be honest. But, but this one in front of you is so quiet, even when under heavy low playing games and rendering videos, you wouldn't even know it was there half the time. It performs really well. Running alongside that, we have 8GB of Kingston HyperX Fury 1600MHz RAM. That's one stick, 8GB. I didn't want to go overkill with the RAM. 8GB is more than enough for any games you're going to play right now. Plus, that's probably about right for rendering videos, which I do use this PC from time to time to do. As I've said, the main party piece, 780Ti graphics card in there. My god, I've got one of those in my home system. It's an absolutely fantastic graphics card, and you'll see later in the video just how well it performs. But again, it's relatively quiet, it runs relatively cool, and overall, sticking that in a mini PC makes it absolutely beast. I've got a two terabyte hard drive in there. I didn't go with an SSD, and mainly because lots of games right now are implementing systems where there's no sort of advantage of having an SSD due to load times. A lot of games will now have a timer on there to make sure that everybody loads into sort of a game before you're allowed to start. In previous games, if you had a hard drive, then you were going to load in slower and you would potentially miss the start of the game. That's not happening anymore. A lot of games have that timer. So having the two terabyte storage in there allows me to record videos, allows me to have pretty much anything I want on that PC and never really run out of space. The power supply is a 750 watt Corsair semi-modular gold power supply. I've always gone with Corsair for power supplies, don't know why, they've just always worked for me, they're extremely reliable. 
And what do you need from a power supply? You just need it to run all the time. It doesn't need to look good. It doesn't need to look fancy. It just needs to work and you need to make sure that it's a good, safe one. And that's why I've always gone with Corsair. And that is about it for the internals. I think it's time we moved on to some games and let's see how this thing performs in Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4 and the ultimate test, Crisis 3. We're going to start with Battlefield 3. You can see the FPS monitor in the top left hand corner. Uh, it's already quite high. Um, this PC is, as I said, a beast, but I'll quickly explain the setup that I used. Um, I had the PC on the desk in a normal room. It wasn't open or anything like that. It was running uh, ultra settings most of the time, anti-aliasing turned on. The only thing I turned off is motion blur, and that's just a personal preference. I just don't like motion blur. It just makes everything look ugly to me. Um, I used my 144Hz BenQ monitor, which is why the sort of FPS is going above 60, otherwise I would have locked it to 60. And really that's about it, using my standard mouse, which is a Razer Mamba 2013. I've got a CM Storm TK mini keyboard that I always use, using speakers because I don't tend to use a headset all that often. And really, this thing performed amazingly well. You can see in the top left hand corner that we're consistently pulling in frames above 100 FPS, which is more than you're ever going to need for a game. Uh, 60 FPS is obviously the optimal level, and as we go into Battlefield 4 and Crisis 3, you'll see the level come down a bit, but with Battlefield 3 being a relatively older game now, it's getting on for maybe three and a half to four years, I expected this PC to cope extremely well, and it did. Okay, time to step it up a gear. This is Battlefield 4 running at ultra settings 1080p. I've got the resolution scale set to 100%. I wanted to make sure there was parity across all the games I used in the review. And once again, motion blur has been disabled. Looking at the FPS counter in the top left hand corner, you can see we're pulling in on average between 70 and 90 FPS here, which again is perfectly playable. As I said, anything above 60 FPS, that's your sweet spot. Really, anything above that and you're looking at a really good playable game here. There are a couple of times, as you can see with the cruise missile that's either come in or is about to come in, that it does drop below 60 FPS. But there was a lot of depth of field going on there, there's a lot of particles flying about, there's a lot of screen shake as well, so I can understand why the FPS dropped down there. But again, anything above 60 FPS is perfectly playable. Anything below 60, before 30, again, you're going to find it really comfortable to play this game. I was really happy with the results in Battlefield 4, considering my main PC has an i7 in it, and this game performed pretty much exactly the same on an i5. So I was really happy with the results, and it makes for a really good playing experience on Battlefield 4. And finally, we come to the ultimate test, which is Crisis 3. Now once again, I'm playing the game at 1080p, ultra settings as high as they can go, anti-aliasing turned on. I don't know about motion blur, I think this is turned off, I think I managed to flick it off in the settings somewhere. And as you can see from the FPS counter in the top corner, we've taken a severe hit over games like Battlefield, but it's still running at above 30 FPS. You have to remember that a lot of last generation console games ran at 30 FPS and even dipped below that. So the fact that this is running at 30 FPS and higher on ultra settings is quite an achievement for this PC. You pretty much need a supercomputer to run Crisis at anything above 60 FPS on ultra settings. But I was really happy with the performance. It was perfectly playable at 35 to 40 FPS and I had no problems aiming or anything like that. The PC did really well here and I was really happy with the results. So there you have it guys, our new Beast Mini PC. This thing is absolutely amazing and it was really worth the money that I laid down for it. There is a link in the description to PC Part Picker, I've put it all in there for you so it will be able to find the PC at the cheapest cost from various different retailers depending on what day of the month it is and when prices vary. So you'll be able to look at how much this PC would set you back and if you wanted to you could go ahead and order all the parts and build it for yourself. I just thought it would be a really cool idea to show off what a mini PC can actually do in terms of gaming when it's kitted with some really good internals. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you did please make sure you leave a rating today and leave all your comments down below. One final thing, I am going to be giving away a Rocat gaming keyboard, it's the mechanical one, the Rios. And I'm going to be giving away a Watch Dogs code for the PC. So if you want to be within a chance of winning both of those things today, then make sure you do leave a like down below and leave a comment in the description too. 
letting me know what I don't know <laughs> something just just say something in the description and then I'll pick a random comment at a later date but thank you very much for watching my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video